everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back today with another set guide and review, and this time it is for the premium, high end, hit driven 2022 Tops Tribute. Is this a set that you should be taking a chance on? What teams are going to be the best in breaks? Is the set really worth the money? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that's in One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Tops Tribute Set Guide and Review. So we have another high-end release dropping from Tops tomorrow. It is 2022 Tops Tribute. And in this set guide and review, what we're trying to do is find out how good Tops Tribute really is. The way we do that is by using the exclusive One Cent Sensational Set Rating. Here's what we cover off on in this set guide and review. First, I start with the general set highlights, tell you the different buying formats that you can get Tops Tribute in, dig a little bit deeper, tell you what the key cards are, tell you what the parallels, relics, and autos that we're chasing are going to be, and then I even give you six teams that you should be targeting in breaks. And I go a step further. I give you a break cheat sheet, which will tell you how good all 30 teams are when you're buying into breaks. And that is what brings us to our one cent sensational set ranking, where we find out how good Tops Tribute really is. Then we wrap everything up by telling you how good every set has been to date and how Tops Tribute ranks amongst those sets. But there's one more thing before we begin. First, be sure to throw over to first and hit that like button for me. It is the best way that you can support the channel. And if you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to subscribe because we do them all throughout the 2022 baseball card collecting season. And if you want to see them first, you got to hit that bell notification so you get notified as soon as they go live. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Patreon page. That's where you can get into my breaks. That's where you can get monthly break discounts, monthly packs, community access over on Discord and more. There is a link in the video description below. Be sure to check it out. So here we go, 2022 Tops Tribute. First, let's cover off on the set highlights. First thing you need to know, it is a premium hit-driven set that focuses on past and present stars the base card checklist is a 100 card checklist and there are only 10 rookie cards found in that checklist they are cards number 91 through 100 and all of them are short prints but don't worry there are more rookies that you can find in the abundance of autograph subsets that are found in tops tribute it is in its 18th year of production, started back in 2001 and then rebooted in 2009 and has been going ever since. For the base set, there is a four color parallel rainbow. And then when we get over into the autos, it actually expands into six colors in the tribute autos subset. This is a set that is only available in hobby format. So no need to go down to Target and Walmart to find these boxes. Rookies, vets, and a ton of retired stars are featured throughout the set, and there are four new autograph sets in 2022. We've got the Solid Gold Greats, the Tribute to MVPs, a very long name here, the Tribute Career Achievement Award Continuity Dual Auto, and we finally have the Tribute Stadium Signatures. There are six hits per box, basically one per pack, so you're going to find three autos and three relics per hobby box. And interestingly, there are no inserts that are found in this set. We have the Tribute to 1953 Box Topper Buybacks, and those are randomly inserted into hobby boxes. We also have the Tribute Stadium Signatures with MLB Stadium Relics. So these are not jersey relics or bat relics. They are stadium relics that have autos along with people that played in those stadiums, obviously, as autos on the card. So a very cool signature lineup for that subset. So what are the different buying formats we can get this in? 
Well, first we have a hobby case. There's going to be six boxes per case, six packs per box, and then three cards per pack. So you get 108 total cards. The price on that right now online going for about $2,560. That gets you a cost per card of $23.70. You're guaranteed to get 18 autos and 18 relics. We also have a hobby box. That's going to have six packs per box, three cards per pack. So you only get 18 cards. Costs you about 430 bucks online right now. Your cost per card creeps up to $23.89. And you do get three relics and three autos. So here's the key cards we're going to be chasing. We'll start with the rookies. Like I said, not very many rookies in the base set checklist. There's only 10. So we will do Jaron Duran, Vidal Bruhan, Josiah Gray, Wander Franco, Brandon Marsh, Gavin Sheets. There's a few other ones as well, but also keep in mind there's more rookies in the auto subsets. So let's cover off on what some of those are. We've got the parallel rookie RCs as some key cards that we're going to be chasing. Remember, those are all short print, high number short prints that are found one out of 18 packs. We also have the autograph patches autos. We have the League Inauguration Autos. Now, that's the set where we're going to find a lot more rookies. We're going to find names like Bobby Witt Jr., Julio Rodriguez. So go check that subset checklist out because I think you guys will really like some of the names that's in that auto subset. We've got the Solid Gold Great Autos, the Tribute Autos, which are the standard autos you're going to find in a lot of these boxes. You've got the Tribute Career Achievement Award Autos. That's going to feature Albert Pujols and Ichiro. We've got the Tribute Stadium Signatures. You can see what that looks like on the right using memorabilia from the stadiums that players played in. We also have the Tribute Tandem Book Autos. We have the Tribute to MVP Autos. And we have the Dual Relic Dual Player Auto. So that's two players, two relics on one card. We have the Milestone Relics. The Stamp of Approval Relics, which are the standard relic that you're going to find in a lot of the boxes. And the Tribute triple relics as well. So what are the parallels we're going to be chasing? Well, like I said, there's only a four color rainbow. We've got green to 99. You can see what the green looks like with the Wander Franco to the right. We've got purple to 50, red to 10, and black one of one. That's it. But keep in mind, there are other rainbows available throughout all of the auto and relic subsets. So speaking of relics, what are we chasing for relics? Well, first we have the dual relics that has 20 cards in the subset and it is numbered one out of 150 on every card. It does have a parallel breakdown as well. Green, purple, orange, red, and black. We have the dual relics, dual players. That's got 22 cards, each numbered to 150 with that same green, purple, orange, red, and black parallel rainbow. And we have the Milestone Relics, only 10 cards in that subset, each numbered to 10. Then we have the Stamp of Approval Relics. You can see what that card looks like over there on the right with the Buster Posey. 43 cards in that subset, each numbered to 150 with a parallel breakdown of green, purple, orange, red, and black. We also have the Tribute Triple Relics. 42 cards in that subset, each numbered to 150, same parallel rainbow breakdown. So now let's get into our autographs. The first one we have, the Iconic Perspective Autos. Going to be 23 cards in that subset with a parallel rainbow of orange, red, and black. We have the League Inauguration Autos. Those are the ones that are going to have a lot more rookies in them, a lot of young stars. There's 19 cards in the subset, and they're all numbered to 99 with a small parallel rainbow as well. We have the Solid Gold Greats Autos, a new one for 2022. 32 cards in that subset with an orange, red, and black parallel rainbow. And we have the Tribute Autos. These are the ones that are going to be most common. You're going to find 84 cards in that subset with a parallel breakdown of blue, green, purple, orange, red, black, and of course a printing plate, one of one. And we have more autos. We have the Tribute Career Achievement Award autos. Those are the ones that feature Ichiro and Albert Pujols. 14 cards in that subset, each number to one of one. And of course, the Dual Auto Tribute Career Achievement. That's one card. It is a one of one. You can see what it looks like over there on the right. We also have the Tribute 
tandem book 11 cards in that subset each number to 25 with a red and black parallel rainbow we also have the tribute to mvp autos 21 cards in that subset with a small parallel rainbow as well we go a little bit deeper to the tribute to world series mvps autos 16 cards in that subset with an orange red and black parallel rainbow and we have autograph relics in the set. Let's cover off on those. We've got the autograph patches, 22 cards in that subset with a parallel breakdown of red and black. We have the milestone relic autos, 14 cards in that subset, each number to one of one, along with the prime patch autos, 44 cards in that subset, each number to one and one of one as well. We have the tribute stadium signatures. Those are the ones that have the signatures and the stadium relic. 23 cards in the subset with a small parallel rainbow of red and black. So, lots of different autos, lots of different relics. A premium hit-driven brand, going to be pretty popular in breaks. And as we're buying into breaks, the question becomes, who should we be buying? What are the good teams? What teams should you stay away from? Well, we're going to cover off on all of that now. And I'm going to start by giving you who I think the best team is. And I think it's not close here. We've got the New York Yankees. They come in with 10 base cards. Remember, the base set checklist is only 100 cards. 10 of them are Yankees. They do have one rookie card, and they have an astonishing 26 different relics and 32 different autos that you can pull. Some of the bigger names you're going to be looking for, Derek Jeter, Reggie Jackson, Mariano Rivera, Don Mattingly, Aaron Judge. There's plenty of other Yankee greats that you're going to find in there. Just a very, very good team, just loaded in this set. The sheer volume that you can get from the Yankees, they're going to be the most expensive team outside of maybe the Tampa Bay Rays. With the sheer volume, it's going to cost you a lot to get it in a pick your team break. If you land them in a random team break, hold on to them because you're probably going to get at least a few Yankee cards out of every box. If you're buying into cases or multiple cases, Probably a very good team to buy into. If you're looking for the most autos, go look at the Los Angeles Angels. There's also the Chicago White Sox. They've got 21 autos, but we're going to cover off on the Angels here. They've got five base cards, one rookie card, five relics, and 21 different autos you can pull. There are a ton of Trout autos. For rookies, you've got Brandon Marsh. There's Otani autos, Rod Carew autos that... Albert Pujols autos, Nolan Ryan, Vladimir Guerrero autos. So just a ton of big names that you can get from the Angels. Also going to be a really expensive team because Mike Trout is littered throughout in the auto checklist. So if you get them in a random team break, keep them, keep them, keep them. They're a great team to get. If you get them in a pick your team, you're going to pay money for it, but you're probably not throwing money away. If you get one of those Trout autos, or an Otani auto, you're doing great. Plus, you've got the rookie auto in Brandon Marsh. He's been having a pretty good season to start 2022. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, look at the Tampa Bay Rays. There's one other team, again, the Chicago White Sox. The Chicago White Sox are a very good team in this, but we're not covering off on the White Sox because the Rays, well, they've got four base cards, two rookie cards, five relics, and 14 different autos you can get in Topps Tribute. The autos you're looking for, obviously the Wander Franco autos. You've also got Brujan in there, and Randy Rosarena has an auto chase in the set as well. Not much outside of that. There's some Austin Meadows stuff, but because of Wander Franco, again, going to be one of the most expensive teams that you can buy in a pick your team. Hold them in a random team break. Don't trade them. You're looking for Wander. Pretty much a layup here. Same thing that we've been covering off on for most of the 2022 collecting season. It's Wander, Wander, Wander time once again with the Tampa Bay Rays in 2022. Now, if you're looking for another solid choice, go look at the Atlanta Braves. They've got six base cards, nine relics, and 20 different autos. And the autos you can get, some really big names. You've got Freddie Freeman, John Schmoltz, Ronald Acuna Jr., Chipper Jones, Greg Maddox, just you know, loaded with a bunch of Hall of Famers. You've got the Acuna one of one you could get out of there if you get real lucky. Probably going to be 
and your top five, top 10 most expensive teams that you can buy in a pick your team break. But I think you're doing good. They've got plenty of stuff that you can pull out of here. If you're getting into a case break, you're probably not going to go home empty handed. If you get them in a random team break again, hold them. They're a really good team in this set. If you're looking for some sleepers though, the Washington Nationals, probably going to be an expensive team, but there's only three base cards. You do get one rookie card. There's eight relics and 13 autos. But Juan Soto has a ton of different autos in this set. And that's why I'm making this team a sleeper. If you get them in a random team break, or even if you don't get them in a random team break, try and trade for them. Try and get them because the Nationals, a lot of people are going to know the Juan Soto auto are in there. But if you land a you know, the Atlanta Braves or something like that, maybe you can trade for the Nationals and gamble on the fact that you could nail a Juan Soto auto, which would be huge. If you get them in a pick your team break, get into a case break, uh, multiple case breaks, something like that, and you might have a pretty decent chance at getting that the Juan Soto auto. It is a fantastic team. Even if you don't get that, you've got the Josiah Gray auto. You've got Bryce Harper autos that you can get with the Washington Nationals, even though he's on the Phillies now. So there's a lot to offer from the Washington Nationals. They're going to be my first sleeper. My second sleeper, the Oakland A's. They've got four base cards, two relics, and 15 autos. 15 auto is pretty high compared to a lot of the other teams, but I don't think that they're going to be a top 10 team value wise. But the reason I picked them, there are a ton of big names again on the auto checklist. Look at Raleigh Fingers, Dennis Eckersley, Ricky Henderson, Reggie Jackson, Matt Olson, a lot of different Hall of Famers, probably a very easy team to trade for in a random team break if you've got another decent team that you can trade out of. In a pick your team break, I think this is going to be one of the better values that you can get in a pick your team break. Probably not a top 10 team. It's the Oakland A's. They get overlooked a lot of times. If you can get them at the right price, they've got enough content that you should not go home empty handed. And always going to be cool having a Raleigh Fingers, a Dennis Eckersley, or Ricky Henderson auto in your collection. Keep in mind, a lot of those could be parallel autos and could hold some significant value. So if you're looking for a value pick, a sleeper pick, don't sleep on the Oakland Athletics. But how are all of the other teams? Well, I'm going to give you a break cheat sheet. That's going to break down where I think all 30 teams lie. And I break them down into three different categories. A tier one, which says these are probably the best teams that you can get in a break. You're not going to go wrong if you get any of these teams. Tier two, kind of that middle of the pack. You're taking a little bit of a gamble, yet might not always hit, but they've got enough in there that you can probably get a few nice cards out of it. And then I've got the bottom tier, tier three, which are teams that I would recommend to kind to steer clear of in 2022 tops tribute so let's start with the top tier we've got the yankees in there we covered off on them just a huge 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 team in tops tribute the red sox also have a ton of different content the seattle mariners probably the sleeper here and maybe the st louis cardinals in my top tier they both have a lot of content i've got the mariners in here because you can get julio rodriguez autos which is just a huge, huge pull for the top tier, especially in the fact that they're all going to be numbered 99 or less. So the Mariners, a little bit of a sleeper here. I believe the Cardinals have 15 different autos that you can get, so they've got enough content that you won't go home empty-handed. And the other teams, kind of the ones that we've been seeing all year, the only other team on here I might call out, the Philadelphia Phillies, just some big Hall of Fame names, a Bryce Harper autos, a lot of different content. So these are going to be my top 10 teams in the top tier. My middle tier, a little bit of a surprise here. The Dodgers down in that second tier again just don't have a ton. They've got a few relics, but I think it's only about eight different autos. I've got my sleeper team, the Oakland A's in here as well. The Orioles, not a ton of content and not a ton of cards, but they do have some very nice like Brooks Robinson autos and stuff that you can get. I've got Kansas City up in the second tier as well. Very little content, but they do have Bobby Witt Jr. autos, and that is going to be a big pull. Don't be surprised if you see Kansas City as a top 10 most expensive team and pick your team breaks. 
A lot of people are going to be chasing that Bobby Witt auto. So those would be the ones in my second tier. And finally, the third tier, the teams I would steer clear of, mostly because they just don't have a lot of stuff that you can pull out of the team set checklists. Again, the Indians are perennially down in the third tier in 2022. The Cubs, again, just don't have a lot of stuff. Would have loved to have seen a Fernando Tatis Jr. auto, but the San Diego Padres have virtually nothing to offer in 2022 Topps Tribute. I believe it's like one auto and three relics total. Really surprised that we didn't see any Fernando Tatis autos in 2022 Topps Tribute. But we've got the Rockies, the Diamondbacks, the Twins, the Tigers, all teams that I would probably just steer clear of in this set. So let me know what teams you are chasing in 2022 Tops Tribute. If you agree with these tiers, if you don't, I hope this helps you as you're buying into breaks. But now, let's find out how good Tops Tribute really is. We're going to do that by using the One Cent Sensational Set Rating, which is the most in-depth analysis you're going to find of any set on the internet. What I do, I break the set down into 10 different categories and each category is worth one to 10 points. Then I add up all of those points and that's what gives us our final sensational set rating. And we use the scale that you see down there at the bottom to find out how good it really is. Then we compare Topps Tribute with the past one cent sensational set scores that it got in 2021 and 2020 to see if the set's getting better, if it's getting worse, like what's changed with the set in the last couple years. Then we compare all of the other sets that have been released in 2022 this season to see how good Topps Tribute stacks up against the other sets from this season. So let's get into it. Here's our scale. And here's our 10 categories. Our first category going to be appeal. How much do people want to buy into this set? Well, I'm going to go ahead and give it a six. It is a expensive set. At 430 bucks a box, that's going to turn a lot of people away. However, there are a lot of investor types that love these higher end premium sets, hit driven sets. Again, you get six hits in a box, three autos, three relics. That's got a lot of of attraction. It is a set that has been around for 18 years, so people know what it is. So I go ahead and give it a six. For the base set checklist, well, it's a short checklist. It's only 100 cards and it only has 10 rookies, but the rookies are all high number short prints. I give it a six as there's just a lot of names that are missing. Again, it covers off a lot on retired stars. So retired star cards on a base set checklist. Not the most valuable, but these are some premium cards and look very nice. Some of the parallels will be worth money, but there's a lot of names that you might find that are missing on here. So I go ahead and give it a six. For the auto checklist, I'm gonna give it a 7.5. It has some huge names. Juan Soto, Mike Trout, Reggie Jackson, Derek Jeter. But I would also say that it's a lot of the names that we've seen year in and year out from tops lately. Brooks Robinson, Johnny Bench, those are all autos that you can get year over year in a lot of these sets, and we see a lot of those names again. Not a lot of new names. However, if you look at the team set checklist, I think you will find that there are some fun names in there, and we're missing some of the big superstars. Fernando Tatis not being in there, I think, is a big miss, so I go ahead and give it a 7.5. For the inserts, parallels, variations, stuff like that, I'm going to give it a six. There are no inserts, which there never have been really in Topps Tribute. We have a small parallel rainbow and there are no variations. I still give it a six because the parallels are all going to be low numbered parallels because the production odds and the overall cards that are produced on this are significantly less than some of the larger sets that get produced. Those parallels are going to hold some value. So I go ahead and give it a six. For our production run and our pack odds, this is one of the better sets you can buy into. It is not produced nearly as much as, say, Bowman, Series 1, and a lot of those bigger sets. And it's a lot easier to hit a low-numbered card to hit a big auto. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5. For the card quality, I'm going to give it a nine. If you have ever opened Topps Tribute, it is a beautiful card. They are mostly all on-card autos. There are some amazing 
relics and the card quality overall, just beautiful pictures and just stunning, stunning artwork on them. So I go ahead and give it a nine. For the historical value, that's how much do these cards hold on the secondary market? If you go and look at the like last 90 days worth of sales over on eBay or something like that, what you will find is the big hits do carry a ton of value. That being said, a lot of the base set cards, they're not going to hold a ton of value. Again, it's a hit driven set and some of the rookies and some of the smaller autos and not as big name autos. Those aren't going to carry a ton. There's not a, you know, a lot of people when they're looking for autos in their search term, they don't say, hey, let me look at Topps Tribute first. But on those premium cards, the low numbered autos, big Juan Sotos, those can carry four digits all day long. Some of them might even get to five digits in a PSA grade. So I go ahead and give it a 6.5, a pretty valuable set, but it could be a little bit better. For the cost value, that's how much return are you going to get if you buy a box or a case of this stuff. I give it a 3.5. Here's why. We've got a lot of different autos. Everyone is chasing the big hit in this set, and not everyone's going to get a big hit. The box costs 430 bucks. I expect that to come down a little bit after the release, but it normally is around 350 to 400 bucks. And you're just not going to get that value on every box. Now, some boxes, if you hit that Mike Trout auto, if you hit that Juan Soto, or if you hit one of those big Hall of Famers in a numbered parallel, you're definitely going to get your return. But it's just not going to be box in and box out. It is a high risk, high reward product. I think if you buy a case, you're a little bit more safe. But again, that's going to cost you 2500 bucks, And just not everyone has that. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 3.5. For the artistic value, how nice are the cards? One of the most beautiful sets that Topps produces every year is Topps Tribute. It is a fantastic card design this year. They put a lot of thought. It is high end. It is quality. It is a premium brand. And the cards show that. There is some amazing detail on the artwork, on the relics. So overall, I go ahead and give it an 8. Then we have collectability. This takes us out of the investor world and how much money am I going to get back and just how much fun is this set to collect overall? Well, I go ahead and give it a six. Here's why. If one, it's expensive. Not everyone wants to collect the set because it's just too expensive of an entry price point, but it's not really made for the entry price point people that are in the hobby. If you want to get into this without spending 430 bucks, it is a fun set to go out and find your singles. It is a fun set to go out and maybe buy a high-end autograph of your favorite player. For set collecting, probably not one of the big sets that you want to collect. So there's some for it and some against it. But I do think that at the, at the bare minimum, if you really like a player and have a favorite player and they've got an auto in this set, it is a beautiful auto to add to your auto collection for your favorite player. It is a high-end brand, so that can be fun, and I do believe that you can find some of these on the secondary market for reasonable prices. So overall, I think if you're collecting singles, it's a fun thing to do. Set collecting, maybe not so much, so I go ahead and give collectability a six. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add up all of those points and find out how good 2022 Topps Tribute really is. And in 2022, on the Sensational Set Rating Score, it scores a 66. So a lower end, very good set overall. Like I said, it's expensive to buy into. It is not for everyone. This is more of an investor and high-end collector set. I think there's a lot that it has to offer. There can be some absolute bangers in here. A fun set to collect on the secondary market, especially for singles. We've got that nice inauguration auto subset which has julio rodriguez it's got bobby witt jr autos so some of the big autos obviously we're chasing wander a lot to offer here it's a very good set overall in 2021 it scored a little bit higher and it came in at a 68.5 tops tribute was a great set last year as well and in 2020 it also scored a 66 so it has kind of been right around that lower end of a very good set. If you're looking to get into Topps Tribute, I would say buy a box. 
If you like chasing hits, if you're an investor, you might want to get into some case breaks, see if you can get lucky there. And if you're on more of a budget, go look at the secondary market for Topps Tribute. There are some of the most beautiful cards that you will find in the 2022 card collecting season. And it is a premium card stock. And we've got some very big names overall. So a lot to like from Topps Tribute. Not a sensational set, again, because it's missing some big names like Fernando Tatis. I've mentioned that a lot already. And because of the price point, it doesn't have enough appeal to the masses that are in the collecting community to really kind of get up to that sensational set rating score. So it's up to you. I mean, it depends on what type of collector you are. Some people love this. Some people, because of price, totally stay away. I think this is very much a affordable high-end investors set and hit driven set that's who i think we're targeting here so if that's you go ahead and buy into it if you're a set collector if you're someone that is not the investing type but more of the collector maybe something you want to stay away from overall so how does 2022 tops tribute rank amongst all of the other sets that have come out in the 2022 card collecting season well it comes in Tied for second out of seven sets with Topps Inception, another high-end brand that came out a little over a month ago. That one obviously has a little bit more of a rookie flair to it, but again, a very good set from Topps Tribute. We got Bowman leading the way with a comfortable margin and a sensational set score of 78. You can go check out that review over on my channel page. And then we've got Don Russ Baseball, the Panini release that came out a couple weeks ago. That is the only Panini brand that is on the list so far. And that kind of rounds out. Series one drops down out of the top three to the fourth spot. And we've got Topps opening day down there at the bottom. The only poor set that has been released. Although I still think that Topps opening day is great for a certain segment of the hobby. So what do you think about this rating? Are you getting into Topps tribute? What are you chasing? Let me know in the comments below. I love responding to all of the comments that are worth responding to. And as you're opening up Topps Tribute, I hope you have excellent luck on your pack polls. And until next time, guys, I hope that you can be good to your family, be good to your friends, and be good to your neighbors. And most importantly, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.